Yeah. They got a summer stock job in a place way up in Minnesota called Bemidji. Okay, yeah. yeah. Is that up near the Canadian border, too? That's uh, about three hours away from where I live. That's almost... I'm more closer to the Canadian border, but that's like three hours uh, uh, more southern, more central Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a summer stock company. I don't know if it's there anymore, but they... They would do, you know, plays during the summer for okay. people. Okay, sure. So it must have been, maybe it was a tourist area of some sort. Well, yeah, Bemidji uh, is still kind of a tourist area. It's uh, it's definitely yeah. uh, it's definitely a nice big city, anyway. Uh, bigger than where I live right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, how big is your city? About uh, 700 people. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, that's a real community. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, I mean, everybody in that area knows everybody else. Pretty much, pretty much. And well, you, you must enjoy living there. Well, I kind of—I was kind of born and raised, or not born here, but like raised more or less. So, yeah. so it works out, I guess. I—I uh, I do want to move to a bigger city eventually, but it's just uh, gotta find the what right city. Job. Would that be? Uh, uh, what, what, what city would you move to? Well, probably Grand Forks, North Dakota. Because that's uh, two hours away from where I live, and that's a bigger city, way bigger. Yeah, what does that have, about 30,000 people? About 30 or 40. Yeah, yeah. Well, far away, if you want to ask me some questions, I'll okay. be happy to answer them for I'll, you. I'll start off with like a little introduction, and then we'll just kind of go into it. Okay? You go right ahead. All right. Go right ahead. All right. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Frankie Slosser Show, and... Uh, well, we got another special guest here. We've been doing a lot of interviews this month. Uh, we'll try to find a lot of hard-to-find actors or people who are still in the business or aren't in the business anymore but uh, are happy to share their story. And today I got with me uh, a legendary actor, none other than Mr. Richard Hurd. How's it going, Richard? Well, it's fine here. I don't know how you survived your winters up there. I've been there, but I was never up near the Canadian border, but... I guess you got a few things beginning. Some uh, you ha- you got some, got some greenery, some buds coming up. Yeah, uh, we 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 uh, our spring is finally coming. I mean, we the winter seemed to last a lot longer than it was supposed to. So yeah, yeah. we kind of got screwed on that deal. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful day down here in Los Angeles. We're out in the San Fernando Valley, and it's just pretty, and it's been it's cooling off now. You know, very pleasant. And as I say, I've been out back. I missed your call, but. You know, working on the garage, uh, cleaning, you know, starting to clean stuff up. And as you know, I paint, so yeah. I've been getting a few things out of the studio. And earlier today, I um, oh set up ten paintings at a small. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, a lot of the coffee shops around here ask you to hang your paintings. Uh-huh. So I did that. There's, it's one I go to frequently, and they know me. So I said, sure, why not? So I had a good time doing that, and came home, and my wife and I. I having a pleasant evening, and I thought, my gosh, I forgot all about calling you, so ask me another question. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of cool that, you know, you, you keep busy with hobbies and stuff. I mean, you know, i seen how old you were on Wikipedia, and it says that you're 80 years old. Is that correct? Yeah, I turned 80 on uh, September 26th. Okay, so we both, <laughs> we're both uh, September birthdays, because I'm uh, September 30th. Wow, good for you, good for you, yeah, yeah, that's right, I was born in the Boston area, So uh, that's where I come from. So, uh, f- being from Boston, I have to ask you, since we're, you know, since you're from Boston, what do you think about the whole uh, Boston bombing thing real quick? Oh, it's a great tragedy, I know exactly where that happened, you know, because, uh, you know, you walk around Boston, so you get to know everything in Boston, it's a great tragedy because it was also Patriots Day, and so many people injured and so many people killed and it's um it's just tragic it, you know it's a it's a situation that can't really physically these people will be impaired the rest of their lives and also their you know their minds uh, yeah. the trauma that it's going to and it's not only the trauma of the people there but it's their friends and relatives it's um there's a madness going on in the world and i i'm sorry to see it happen anywhere and I think all we can do with uh, people out there is think good thoughts and pray good thoughts for all these people that were injured yeah, and all of them that passed away. Yeah, it's just, it's just kind of too bad. I mean, uh, it's like, why why does this have to happen? You know, I mean, 9-11 was uh, scary enough, and now it's like people want to try to redo it almost like. 
Yeah. It's crazy. Do you have much theater up there or anything? Do you have any? Well, I wouldn't imagine. That well, you do. we if yeah, we if we do little, it's, what, yeah. if we do it's like uh, through like a, a community like community theater, but it's not like like yeah. it's not like Broadway or anything like that. What you're probably referring no, to. No, gosh, no, I can't imagine that it would, <laughs> it would be too ex- even Broadway is too expensive for Broadway. Yeah, but it would be nice if they did some Broadway around my area. They probably do it Grand Forks. Because they got since it's a bigger area, they actually got like like you know bigger arenas and stuff like that where they can actually to produce stuff like that. But in a small town, I tell you what, it, it's so hard to get people into like culture and stuff like that. Like I've always been into films and and, and entertainment around here. A lot of people around here are more small community minded. They're more they want to be farmers. They want to be factory workers. They want to be. You know, nobody really wants to be in the entertainment business. I never hear hardly anybody want to say, hey, I'd like to try being an actor or an actress or a singer or a songwriter or whatever. So, well, you know, I guess a lot of people that want to do, they'll, if they get off to college and they see things going on or they see plays, you know, maybe something will pop in their mind and they'll say, I'd like to try that. You know, I'd like to, you know, study a little drama at the university, maybe do a play in community theater. A lot of people do it as a hobby, and it's... Um, it's a good thing. I would imagine over there in Dakota, they must have a lot of community theater. Oh, yeah. And maybe they have a theater that road shows come through, and people have a greater opportunity to go and enjoy things like that. But if you don't have things around like that, then there's not a lot of incentive for people to get together and do a play. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. And, and because that's where it all begins. Oh, you know, sure. It begins with theater and Community theater is a wonderful thing in America. As a matter of fact, it's a wonderful thing throughout the world because people not only do plays, but they, they get to meet other pe- people that have uh, similar interests in life. Uh, it, it's it's a good situation. Yeah, and, and you know, then, and then everybody has that in common that they like to do that. But, but like, for you, like, when you first started, like, what, what kind of got you into the whole acting bug, more or less? Well, you know, I started... Um, I heard uh, a play in rehearsal and it excited me and I got very interested and I, I got out there in the uh, community and found out about where plays were being done and I met some people that are a bit older than me that were going to college that you know, suggested certain things and some radio shows together and then I auditioned. Uh, Bo- Boston is a great theater town, though. It's quite different from where you live. Yeah. And uh, they have a lot of community theater all over, and uh, they have five, at that time, they had five professional theaters, uh, because years ago when Broadway Broadway shows would tour, and they would go to New Haven, Philadelphia, Boston, and they would work, you know, the wrinkles and the tough spots in the plays, and by the time they got to New York, uh, they were ready to go, hopefully. Now they do previews. They don't go on the road. Uh, so what I'm getting at is a lot of pre-Broadway plays came through Boston. Uh-huh. And when I was growing up at that time, you know, you could get a second balcony seat for maybe 50 cents or a buck. So you saw a lot of professional shows. It was a great opportunity. And they had some fairly uh, decent uh, college. Well, they have a lot of colleges and universities in the Boston area that all had drama departments and a lot of them had people that were out directing in the community uh, and they had several two or three uh, colleges at that time which have grown quite large now that were drama schools so i had an opportunity to meet with uh, and um, work with a lot of people you know when i was 14 15 16 well, 15 16 work with people that had a tremendous amount of experience or really had spent a lot of years in community theater so it was an opportunity but any opportunity that might be there, Sean, there could be opportunities there, but if you don't go out and look for them, uh, it's not going to come to your door. You you know, you can't be passive. You have to really get out and make things happen because it's a very tough business, and I, I would never, ever, um, you know, encourage anyone to get into the business of uh, the entertainment business. It's just too tough, and it's uh, there aren't that many opportunities anymore anyway. Yeah, and, and uh, do you think it's a lot, well, obviously it's a lot more harder now than it, would have, than it probably was back when you started, I suppose, huh? Well, you know, nothing, uh, it, it may or may not be difficult, but the point is people have to have a tremendous incentive, and they have to be obsessed. If you're really serious about anything, mm-hmm. 
doesn't even have to be acting. You know, what farming, uh, you know, building a house, learning carpentry. You have to be obsessed about it. If you really want to be good at it, you have to spend a lot of extra time at it, studying and uh, applying what you've learned to the soil or to building a house or to painting or whatever it may be. You know, everything takes, um, you know, grit, stud time, but uh, nothing, you, you, no, nobody hands anybody anything. You just have to go out and get it yourself. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and maybe sooner or later the opportunity will, will come, but it seemed like for you... Well, you what you're doing, you know, you, you're doing, you're starting in a smaller way, but at least you're starting with the radio, and, yeah. you know, you, you seem to enjoy it, and hopefully if you move to another town, you'll have an opportunity to maybe... Um, get some sort of a job on a smaller station to start with and work your way up. Oh, yeah. I mean, I never knew what my life was ever going to amount to as far as when I was growing up, but then after a while, I just, I got hooked on radio. You know, that's all I really wanted to do, and then I went to radio school, and and then I learned, you know, about all the things you could do with your voice and all the things you could do with editing software and everything like that, and I just like, you sure. know what? Why don't we try? Well, radio things? was here long before there was television. Well, I used to listen to, uh, <clears throat> as many people did, their mothers and fathers. Uh, you know, all we had were radio shows, and well, they were wonderful, and they were great for your imagination. And television came along, and, you know, it um, kind of spoiled it in a way, because a lot of people began to get out of the house, and it, it just changed the whole complexion of the entertainment industry. And especially the the family, it, uh, the family was kept in the house, and uh, your television prevented a lot of people while they didn't go. They stopped going to the theater, live theater, because they could stay something privacy and comfort of their own living room. So that did hurt uh, live theater quite a while. Sure. So, uh, what are some more? Uh, what are some notable roles that uh, that people who are listening to this uh, interview today would uh, remember you from? Well, you know, we have a lot of Seinfeld fans out there, and I played um, Mr. Wilhelm, George's boss, uh, Yankees, for, oh, I recurred for two seasons there. And, uh, you know, I did V, and I'm going to be doing a new pilot of us called Star Trek Renegade. So, you know, I uh, P.J. Hooker with Bill Shatner, films, uh, China Syndrome, things of that sort that people would probably recognize me from. Oh, and all they have to really do, if they want to find out, you know, it's very, very simple, as you know these days. Just go to www.richardherd.com, right. and you spell it H-E-R-D. You just go www.richardherd.com, and you'll find out a lot more about the person that Sean is interviewing. <laughs> and, and, and you can also, if you want to, you can contact me through my uh, web. There's a way of doing that. And, you know, let me know that you heard the show, or... You enjoyed it. If you had any questions, or no, just let me know. Yeah, too bad you. Too bad you don't have like a Facebook page because it seems like the like I always try to look for you know when I'm looking to interview somebody, I always try to look at Facebook first to see if anybody if these people actually have a, a Facebook. And well, you know, I have a lot of things to do, and yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm still quite busy. I just don't have the time, and I'm I don't have somebody to manage that end of the business for me. Oh, sure. So it's very, it's very, very difficult to spend extra time, you know, on something like that. Oh, I'd yeah. rather do something like this where you can get to the community and say hello and uh, hi, and we can, we can share this 15 to 20 minutes out there with the fans and with your cell position in radio. Sure. Yeah, that's how I found you through your website. I remember... I don't know if you remember me saying this on your voice well, message. Well, there is something that people might. Last season, uh, last year, you know, Betty White had a show called, uh, still does, Off Their Rockers. Yep. It's on NBC. Well, I did 10 episodes of that show last season. So <laughs> people would find me on that show. That was quite recently. And in June, I'm doing that new pilot for Star Trek uh, Renegade. Wow. So, you know, that gets me out of the house, and yeah. I enjoy it. But I have other things I do now, you know, spend time sure. with the family. I paint and do a bit of poetry. <laughs> My wife and I were out yesterday. We were guest poets, a very nice uh, gathering of poets. And, oh. um, you know, and I go to painting class whenever I can. So, you know, those are singular things that people can do. Um, you know, they can, uh, they can study painting. Uh, they can study music. Uh, even in a small community, there are opportunities 
to do things of this sort. I'm sure there are people in your community that even teach uh, music of some sort. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there are several people that are artists and might very well show their stuff downtown. Oh, yep, yep. Uh, we got that in our town called Thief River Falls, Minnesota, where they do like art shows and stuff like that. And, and uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. So we, 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 we have flea markets and things yeah. of that sort where they can uh, show what they've done and share it with the community. Oh yeah. I mean, we we got a little culture over here in this area, but I just wish I always wish that we had more. I mean, I the closest that I've ever been to California was uh, when I took a trip last year to Astoria, Oregon. And I, I took I went over there because my favorite movie, The Goonies, were filmed there, or part of it anyway was filmed there. And I wanted to see. That was my second. Was it a movie. nice community? Oh, very nice community. Oh, very nice. And I felt like it was still 1985 when the movie was filmed. <laughs> mm-hmm. Was it a large community? Uh, yeah, I would say probably at least over 10,000 people or more. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good size. Yeah. You know, Pat and I, my wife and I, were down to New Orleans recently, but we did uh, travel uh, west. We went through uh, uh, Saint uh, Saint Martin's Day. We went through Saint. Fr- we went to uh, Francisville, and they're very small communities. But I like the sense of community. Everybody knows everybody else, and it, it was very relaxing for us uh, coming from. Uh, the Los Angeles area, where we are, is, is quite nice. It's pleasant. It's quiet. Oh, sure. You know, there are a lot of trees and so forth. But once you get in the car, it, it's a car place, you know, Los Angeles. You can't really get anywhere unless you get in a car. Yeah. And there are more and more vehicles on the road, and more of the roads are being, you know, banged up. <laughs> and it's nice to get to a smaller community where you have a greater sense of nature. And, you know, it's very peaceful. And we oh. certainly... In, and we also went, while we were there, we went to the uh, Tennessee Williams uh, Festival. Oh, sure. A very fine uh, playwright, and that, that was done. Uh, they really did a superb job on putting that together. <clears throat> and people came from all over to see that. Oh, yeah. They came from all over the country uh, to see uh, or to uh, you know, be part of that. And it was a pleasant time for us. We, we enjoyed it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so... So it seems to me like you're you're a pretty old school type of guy. I mean, what do you think about uh, all this technology and everything nowadays compared to when you were a young man? Well, I think it's um, it's robbed people in a way yeah, you, because you had to get out there and read about it, study it, do it. You know, you could really it was a hands on situation. Everything was a hands on. There's so much uh, that is made easier. For, I mean, you just sit down at the the, the computer there were you know you couldn't google you had to go to the library and look this up and look that up and um every it, it, the whole world now has become a much smaller community because of that and i i think um, the whole sense of family has changed and everything is so rapid now and people get a bore bored easily of things uh, it, it was different but you know it's it's their lives at this particular time and some people, you know, the people that are living today, they'll look back on these days as the good old days, just the way we look back on our days as the good old days. Sure. So, you know, to each his own. You yeah. know, that's, they just have to find their own way, just like we found our own way. Oh, sure. Well, the, the last question that I have for you before we uh, close this interview, uh, uh, we were talking about the, the acting biz and the entertainment biz, and I know you said that you're not you're not a forceful person to say to force anybody to join the entertainment business. But like, what did you say? I didn't quite understand. Like, there. like, uh, like my question was like, uh, uh, we were talking about the entertainment business more or less, and, and I know you said that you're not you're not the type of person to force anybody to be involved into the entertainment business, but. If somebody was interested in being a part of it, what type of advice would you give that person? Well, what I'd tell them to do is get themselves a job, save up a lot of money, uh, or you know, or apply for a scholarship, and you know, and get to um, get to a you know uh, some situation where they could study with somebody in a larger city. You know, you have right down there. You have the, uh, right there. You have the Guthrie Theater. One of the finest theaters in the country. It's right in your state. Okay. Minneapolis, St. Paul, right? Sure, sure. Well, what they should do is go down there, save up their money, and first of all, what they should do, they should Google to see if there are any teachers, or maybe they could go to the university or apply for the university. But they've got to get a background. They've got to get an education in theater. You can't just go out and 
waste your time trying to get a job. They've got to get a background. So they have to study. And they have to make great sacrifices to do that. It's just nothing's going to come to you unless you get out there and make it happen yourself. Uh, and if, if you're in a larger community, then I would say, well, you know, do as much community theater as possible to gain some experience. But the way you're telling me is that's not available in your community. So they have to move to a larger community where they can do community theater, but more importantly, where they can study with somebody who really is an experienced person, somebody that has theater, professional theater, out of New York in their background, rather than somebody who just says they're a drama teacher. Sure. There are great sacrifices. I, you know, I'd rather not, you know, encourage anybody to do that. Okay. I would encourage them to save their money and get to college, get a degree. And so if they do decide to go in, try for the theater, if it doesn't happen, at least they can fall back and maybe take her and, and end up in, you know, teaching. Yeah. But you just don't want to throw away your life when, unless, uh, you, you see, you have to be willing to starve because you're not going to make any money for years and years and years. You know, yeah. it's, it's a very difficult situation, but like any job, you have to go out, you have to um, apprentice, you learn how to do the tasks in front of you. Uh, and, and, you know, and advice like this is just good for me. You know, I tell you, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I always ask people for advice because it, it, I always wonder what they're going to say. And, and that's why I asked you for that type of advice of uh, if anybody was interested. Because it's, it's not good to force people to do stuff, but, you know, it's always nice to give that friendly advice. And, you know, because you, you yeah, got your experience. Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to have to go shortly now. My wife okay. is waving at me. Okay. But, Sean, I'm, I'm glad we were able to do this. Yep. Today. And I, I really applaud your trying to, uh, you know, move up and get more experience in radio and so forth. And I think you do have to, as you say, move to a larger community. But at least, you're, you know, the harder you work, the luckier you get. And at least you're trying to make that first step. And I want to wish you, you, you know, I want to wish you the best in your, you know, what you're trying to do with your life. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, it means a lot coming from you. You know, I, you know, thanks. Okay, and look, you take care of yourself, and the very best um, to you and to your family. All right, man. And to the list, and to, and to all your listeners. <laughs> all right, Richard, thanks for uh, letting me do this with you. It was a lot of fun. Take care, Sean. Have a good week. Yeah, you too. That was the legendary Richard Hurd, and uh, well, very nice guy, very down to earth guy. I was really, I'm really kind of surprised. You know, you figure a lot of these Hollywood people won't be a uh, down to earth, but was. so I, I really want to say thank you to Richard for, uh, personally uh, for letting me do this with him, and uh, you know, we, you know, it, it's just nice to know what uh, other Hollywood actors and actresses. And of course, we haven't really had any any females on at all yet. I don't know why, but I guess it's always just been uh, just a guy show more or less. But anyway, I mean, it's just nice to get some advice and uh, to learn uh, from their experience what type of advice they would give to, to anybody that wanted to be a part of the entertainment business. Always take it to heart, because you just never know what's out there. But anyway, I'm Frankie Slauson, and uh, thanks again for joining me for another great interview, and uh, take care, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye.